All right, so looking at a few more settings, next we've got channel. Uh, channel is kind of confusing the very first time you look at it, and it's kind of scary looking with all of these green and red items. But channel here, we have status and features. So there's copyright status, community guideline status. Now, I, I think it's kind of weird that they've got it backwards, where most people would perhaps look at it in this way. There's a gauge right here. Smiley face. Everything's good. Uh, less good, less good, bad. So usually you would see that left to right, I suppose. So here it, has, it says you have zero copyright strikes. You have zero community guideline strikes. So uh, YouTube gives you three strikes and you're out. Uh, you keep violating copyrights, they're going to shut down your account. So that's one of the reasons, again, don't use that great song that you love. Use a song from the Creator Studio. That's the big way that you're going to get these strikes. You created this amazing video, but you use copyrighted music, and you don't own the copyright. You're going to get a strike. Three strikes, and you're out. They shut you down. So right here, status and features is where you see that. And um, nowadays, these networks are so big, so many people are on them, that these networks have to operate in a, in a strategy of guilty until proven innocent. Their algorithm s seems to have seen that there was a copyrighted song, and so it'll strike you. No real person really looks at it. And that's the big problem with a lot of this social media, that it's very, very automated, and therefore the decisions that happen often are very dumb. Well, YouTube supposedly hired very recently like 10,000 new content moderators. So 10,000 real people that are supposed to monitor this. Well, there's way more than 10,000 videos being uploaded every day to YouTube. So I don't think that's going to be enough. But this is the screen where you keep track of that. Have you violated copyrights? And um, to sort of get back into their good graces again, uh, guilty until proven innocent. And they're such a big company that it might be hard to contact anyone to say, well, I made a mistake. I'll remove the song, etc." You might, it might be worse, um, you know, you get the, the strike and you can't deal with it. Question? Um, so does that mean, like, if you see a cover of a song, then you can't upload that? Like, that one's a little bit different. All the time. <laughs> that one's a little bit different. Okay. Um, there is a little bit more leeway uh, within the Creator Studio music library, uh, Creator Studio music policies. Uh, this is where it's going to then give you the list of songs from real artists and such, and how you can use them. So example, Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. Uh, this one says, um, you can perform a cover. Yeah, that one seems to be fine. So if I'm interested in some Ramones music, I could search there. It'll show me then their songs and tell me what the status is and how I can or cannot use them. Usually for covers, you have some leeway, mm -hmm. but for any other thing, you usually don't. So that would be like you have a video and you're importing a song? Exactly. If you have a video and you're importing someone else's song, usually that's the big one. No, no. So what's the cover? When you sing something yourself, or when you play your own instruments of their music. And you upload it to YouTube, right? Hmm. Right. It's just, I mean, there was a whole bunch of people that do that. <laughs> yeah, so there is leeway. There is leeway on that one. It's just like taking the song as is, that's the one that's not that great. You're someone else's music. You're the one who's recording yeah. somebody else's song. Right. No, it's uh, she is recording her version of yeah. someone else's song. With my voice. Mm -hmm. So she can promote herself. Mm -hmm. All right, so the other things over here are also various features that are not on by default or not available until a certain point. So for example, I have the ability to upload. That's enabled. Great. Monetization. Um, I'm eligible and I can enable it. Well, monetization, as I've said previously, you can make money off of YouTube. You can actually profit off of this network, whereas almost every other network does not have this feature. So there is a process to do, and I'm not going to go through the steps, 
but there is a process that you can do to set this up so that you to start making money on your YouTube. It says become a partner through monetization by displaying ads on your videos. So just like in the real world for you know 70 years on TV, the way you make money on TV is that you run ads. Ads run on your TV show in the real world and you make money because the advertiser wanted to be visible on your channel. In the digital world, same thing. They're going to run ads on your video and then when the video when your video starts you're going to be an ad and if a person clicks on the ad you make money depending on many many factors you can either make a little bit of money or a lot of money some of the most popular youtubers out there make millions of dollars per year by having these ads on their videos personally just anecdotally for fun i have a youtube channel and a, and a bunch of other ones that i work with and I, I've made in total like six hundred dollars off of YouTube. Now, in the grand scheme of it all, you know that's like uh, that's that's not very much money in the years that I've had YouTube. But for just uploading videos and you know passive income and such, six hundred dollars in total is pretty good. Yeah. Does one have to pay YouTube as one does Facebook? You can use YouTube in the same way that you use Facebook in terms of boosting posts and visibility, yeah. But the default of it all is completely free. So monetization, um, that's the screen in there. Channel monetization. Monetization activating the feature to make money from YouTube. Caveat. Nowadays, perhaps, don't even bother with that. The, the good times are over. The paradise is gone. Because it used to be very easy to set it up and start making money on YouTube. Like I said, I, I made $600. Um, Last year, they started to make it a little harder by saying you need to have X number of viewers to qualify. This year, they made it even harder. Nowadays, you need, I believe it's 4,000 um, hours of views. So all of your videos, people have need to have watched them, I believe, at least 4,000 hours. So if I've, got one vi if I've got videos that are two minutes long, you need to have people watching those over and over and over and over because this is I believe in hours even if it's 4,000 minutes I think it's hours because it was a very high bar 4,000 hours okay plus you need to have at least 1,000 subscribers if I'm starting off right now I have zero and I for one of my fun channels I've had it since 2009 and I've barely reached 250 subscribers. Now, I didn't really get serious about it until like last year, two years ago. So I barely reached 250 subscribers. But on their lower bar that they had for all of those years, I was making some money. And this year, zero. Because now, I, I have 4,000 hours. I just don't have 1,000 subscribers. I barely reached 250. So, very pessimistically, Unless you're going to spend a lot of time and effort in making videos like every day and amazing videos and promoting yourself for free on the other networks and paid and all of that, you, to, to get the minimum of 1,000 subscribers to start off with, I think it's a very high bar. You may be able to get there. Yeah, you may have amazing content. Great. But for most of us, uh, it's not worth it anymore. Yes? So if it's advertising, it's from the companies that have ads, it's not necessarily money from YouTube, is that correct, or YouTube? Exactly. Um, this and why is... would they change it then? What's that? Then why would YouTube change it if they weren't? They changed it because there's been too many controversies about too many of these high-profile YouTube celebrities that have been abusing the platform. Uh, so many instances, one of them that broke the camel's back was that there was this one uh, YouTube uh, celebrity that he uh, uploaded a video of a suicide. And so it was, uh, he was walking around in one of the famous Japanese forests where that happens, and he ran into a dead body and he uploaded it for, for, the, for whatever, the fame of it. And YouTube says, okay, that, that's enough. Now we're going to punish everyone 
by uh, doing something like that. And then there's just been a lot of hate speech and um, stolen content. Someone uploads a video that, it, that becomes viral, someone steals a video and they upload it too and they make money off of it. Well, they just created the account, they have two followers, but they've got 10,000 hours of views. So now it's like, okay, you need to have this number of subscribers, this number of hours to, for us to think that you're legitimate. But a lot of really legitimate people completely suffered because obviously I'm not trying to be a victim here, but I had you know 200 subscribers, I had enough views, but my subscribers were too low, so I don't qualify. Yeah. So how does this work? Like if you're um, putting a video, you don't have subscribers yet. So how are you gonna? We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk today about how to get those followers and subscribers because it feels like yeah, if it's such an uphill battle, why do I even try? We'll talk about how to start to build those hours now. At the beginning of the year, I had I, I had crossed over to 200 subscribers. Now I've got 250. So obviously I'm still far away. But uh, we'll talk about the tactics to get more followers and views and all of that. So, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have an advertiser. Mm -hmm. how, how do they get there on the right hand side of the screen? Uh, who uploaded? Uh, well, there's a, there's a couple of ways. Uh, one, if you've got, if you see those ads on the side and stuff right. uh, up here and such, the, the, through this, there is a way to pay to see to get viewed like this uh, on most of the networks uh, Twitter and all of those you use them for free but then you can pay to be visible even more same thing on YouTube I can create videos and upload them all day long for free but if I pay YouTube then my video could be more popular and reach two million views but you're spending you know, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars to reach more people. Just like in the real world, if I want my TV show to be visible, well, I'm going to put an ad for that TV show on the channel, and that channel, and another channel, and and an ad on the and, a, and an ad on the newspaper. So I'm going to spend to try to get more views. All right, so. That's monetization. We've mentioned live stream, embedding, similar. Okay, so by the default, uh, we our videos can be up to 15 minutes. All you have to do is go to this screen and turn on give me more than 15 minutes, and then you can upload videos longer than 15 minutes. Uh, that depends on your kinds of videos that you're uploading, like tutorials or such. Maybe you need more time. That's fine. You can have private videos, unlisted videos. We'll cover those a little later custom thumbnails by by default when you upload a video on YouTube it's gonna sort of randomly grab a a piece of the video to put it as your thumbnail but some of these look a little better than others right look at this honest trailers right here it's got uh, the text and the shot this one has got okay uh, Conan and the icon uh, these are custom videos like that one right here looks like it's just you know any random part of the video whereas this one at least has the SNL logo this one's got text so to make to be able to make a custom logo there it is there our custom um, thumbnail it's right there lets you add a custom thumbnail some of these that you that are not on you have to first go through a verification process again I, I'm not gonna do it during the lecture but following a few steps there it'll verify that you're you know like a, a real entity it'll verify that you are a real user I think they're they're gonna send you a text message and you have to confirm it and such so you can do that on your own but once you do verification you have extra features there's another one over here. At the moment, my YouTube address is a big old long address of gibberish. If I want to shorten it down to something memorable, I have to verify, and then I can have that, that feature. But this is another one that they raised the bar on. You used to be able to pick your custom address right away. Then uh, last year or so, they said, OK, you need at least 100 subscribers uh, to be able to get your custom address. Uh, just to see what it looks like your address right now 
if you um, if you go back to dashboard view channel my address on YouTube right now is youtube.com slash channel slash gibberish that's what I'm gonna need to put on my business card that's what I'm gonna need to put on my website right now because I have a brand new account it gives me a randomly generated name well eventually I want youtube.com slash Victor Campos to get that custom address is in that screen that we're looking at there back in the remember you can uh, go back to the creator studio channel and it's custom there I'm not eligible yet I haven't verified and I don't have the requirements which are 100 subscribers yes Yes, at least that they would still be able to find me if they search Victor Campos because that's the name of the channel. It's just that the address is not the user-friendly readable one. I can get sponsorships. This is another way to make money off of YouTube. Ineligible at the moment because it's so new I haven't verified, I haven't fully set it up. Let's go to Upload Defaults. When you upload a YouTube video, you're going to be able to optimize it, sort of like SEO optimization, search engine optimization. We're going to spend a little time on talking about optimizing our video. Well, under Upload Defaults, we have a way to set up our defaults so that every time we upload a video, some of the work is done for us. When you upload a video, it can have various privacy settings. Is the video public for anyone to be able to find or view? Is it unlisted or private? Let me make a note of what these are. Upload defaults. Privacy. Public. Unlisted. private. There's also another one that you don't see until you actually upload called scheduled. Public. Anyone with the URL with the address or searching can find, can watch your video. Unlisted. Only anyone with the URL can watch your video so they won't find your video by searching YouTube or Google if you've got it as unlisted only if they have the address so that's a way to sort of have like exclusive content for your fans private no one except yourself can watch actually technically or if you email people directly the URL and but this system is is very cumbersome it's not it's not user friendly you have to individually you have to mail email the people in their system individually the web address to your video there's no way to import a whole list of 50 people, you have to do it one at a time. This person can watch it, this person can watch it, this person can watch it. Yeah? Can you uh, set it up initially as private and then go back to that? Yes. And then yes, you can switch between any of these settings anytime you want, however many, however many times you want. Scheduled. Uh, first, set when the video will appear. So today, tomorrow, next week at 3 in the morning, tomorrow at 7 p.m., in two weeks at uh, 4.31 a.m., you can schedule your video to appear anytime you want in the future, from one hour to one year. Um, it will then 
automatically become public at that point, which then you can set to unlisted or private or whatever. Then becomes public, which can further be changed to unlisted or private. So you can set it up, perhaps, that all my videos are automatically going to be uploaded as private so that I can then further SEO optimize them, as we'll talk about in a moment. And then eventually, when they're perfect, put them public, and then everyone can see them. Maybe you upload them as unlisted for a moment to have people, can you check out my video? Can you give me some feedback on it? And then when you've got that, you can make it public. So there it is. Uh, what's my um, default upload setting category? You have these categories. There's not a there's not a lot of them as you would think, but these are the various categories where you can upload your videos into. And you can switch categories whenever you want, and there's no wrong category. But obviously, if I'm uploading a video on uh, how to uh, upgrade my computer, I wouldn't put it in in comedy or music I would put it under how to maybe education I'm teaching someone how to do something so the point of that is if someone is browsing the entertainment section in YouTube my video could appear or if someone is if someone is constantly watching videos about news YouTube will recommend them news videos my video is a news video my video might get recommended question is there a limit to how many categories you can pick? yes one you select gaming and it's gaming you you want people you gotta select people only one yes is there an age limit for having a you have to be at least 13 years old most of these networks, you have to be at least 13, and then there's no uh, maximum. So would you see younger than 13, their parents have to... They have, if a, someone's under 13 using it, either they're not telling their parents, or their parents are bad parents, or their parents don't care. But yes, uh, everyone using YouTube should be at least 13. And especially when you create an account. You know, kids watching YouTube, okay, that's another matter, but that's another matter. Uh, but you should at least be 13 if you're if you're creating YouTube content. When you create the account, there there is a place there that asks you for your age. So uh, if it detects that you're under 13, I don't believe it'll let you create it. It shouldn't. Uh, another question? Yeah. Can you upload the same video multiple times to different categories? No, it'll so detect. One category, yeah. Exactly, it'll detect uh, that it's the same video. It can, it's pretty smart that it can detect this is the exact same length as this video and it can even detect you know the audio and all of that so it'll say this video sounds exactly the same as that video and it's exactly the length of that video it's the same video and it will not let you have more than one video that is exactly the same you can't game the system exactly only changing the name and such it, it, it will uh, not be able to trick it. It will know by the length, and even if you add a few seconds at the beginning and such, it'll know by the audio. It's pretty smart about detecting audio. Yeah. Yes. Can you change the category later if you feel? Yeah. Like you can change these whenever you want. So one possible workaround is upload it as one particular category, see if you get activity, and then maybe change it to another one. But obviously, don't don't game the system by putting my how-to video into music because then that's when, again, guilty until proven innocent. So if you then try to do too many tricks, YouTube can give you a strike and three strikes and you're out. Title of the video. Well, every video most likely is going to have a different title. However, what you could use the title for is maybe every time you put a certain keyword into your title. Victor's Tips. So I'm going to be uploading videos every week about some tip that I've got. So this week is this tip on gardening, and next week is about cooking, and next week is about WordPress. But every time I also want to include the words Victor's Tips in the title. So I can do that. 
when I upload the video, it will automatically have that title, which then I can remove if I want, or add to it. January 1, actually January 2, how to recover over a hang out, uh, over a uh, hangout, not hangout, um, hung, uh, how to recover over being hungover, that's what I meant. So, um, I have the little bit that will be the same always, and then it'll change after that. No, the purpose of this is just to name the particular video I uploaded. Like when I look over here, the name of this one is Buying Beer. The name of this one is Hawkeye Disappoints the Avengers. So um, all of these are the titles. And, and notice here that from the Saturday Night Live, they have SNL on each of their videos. Mm -hmm. So most likely they've got it like that, that they automatically um, have something being displayed in the title every time. Yes? I'm just curious when you, when you were referring to the three strikes and then going back to the story of the one big YouTuber that videotaped the suicide. I was familiar with that because he's really big in the teens and my yeah. teenage son was you know, the top of the school. Mm -hmm. And how, if you're bringing a whole bunch of money or a whole bunch of views or big advertisers, do they still, are they still punished the same way as your local no. joke? No. That's the double-edged sword there. Uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube doesn't operate out of the kindness of their hearts to allow you a place to express yourself, even though that's what the marketing material says. YouTube operates to make money. Therefore, their biggest, most popular people that are the most controversial or shocking or whatever make the most money because people say, did you see the latest video? Let me go watch it. And I'll click an ad and I make money. So nope, YouTube claims that they're egalitarian and uh, democratic and uh, equal and all of that. But no, profits rise over that for mo most of these entities. And therefore, uh, they get the slap on the wrist. Uh, they do the PR tour and then back to normal. So uh, for us regular people, no, we don't have uh, that fame. So we will get the real consequences. Yes? Are there guidelines? What's appropriate? What's not like the government for? Yeah, it's going to be somewhere here under help. Um, guidelines, community guidelines and strike basics, advertiser friendly content. So okay, advertiser friendly content. How can I make videos that advertisers will want to put on my video, their ads so that I can make money? So just by going to search and typing in a keyword, started to type guidelines, it's going to give me all of the guidelines for me to read about what's good and what's not. Okay, description. So here is um, when we upload a video, we have a spot here to write anything that we want about our video in her in hopes of getting found. When I actually upload it, when we actually upload a video in a moment, we'll deal with this in detail. But here's a pl another place where I can then add the same thing every time I upload it. Maybe every time I upload every time I upload a video, I also want to say, don't forget to follow on Facebook. And I can add my Facebook address. So what will happen is every time I upload a video, it will automatically have that in the description, and then I can further go in and add the details about that that particular video. And links in the description will automatically be live, meaning a person can click on that to follow the link. If you put an address up on the title, that is not active. But if you put it in a description, and you can put 50 links if you want, they will all be active. Tags. So sort of like hashtags or keywords, what are words that describe your video that you want to help uh, you get found. So let's say I'm going to put tips, space, um, advice, space, how to. 
Now, if there's a word um, advanced um, advanced um, know-how, the keyword advanced. If someone types, you know, advanced math, mine it'll be seen as advanced, which it may show up as well, which I don't want. So what I'm getting at is that if you have uh, keywords that need to be multiple words, put them in quotes. And then now, if someone searches for advanced know-how, they should find this video. So putting quotes is, is helpful to group the words. Yes, the title, the description, title, description, and tags, the search engine will look at all three. Comments and ratings. I don't want any comments. I don't want anyone to write anything on my, on my videos. I don't want any negativity. Well, then I'm also omitting the positivity. Instead, allow comments that are approved. Since we set the setting on the other screen, it already says approved, but the default would have been all. Um, it would have been there, allow all videos. Well, because on the other setting, um, community, I set it to approved, it says approved. People can give thumbs up and thumbs down, and people can see that. So if you got a lot of thumbs down on your video, that's that negativity actually. Negativity creates negativity. Positivity creates positivity. If people are starting to write negative, uh, if starting to give thumbs down, you'll get more thumbs down probably because of group effect. But if ha you have thumbs up, people will probably give more thumbs up because they see thumbs up. But if you don't want people to see the thumbs up and thumbs down ratings, you can turn it off. I don't think there's any positive or negative about turning that on or off. Except if all your videos are negative, you may not want to show that. But my question is, why are your videos causing such negative reactions? So I would leave that on. What's the language of your video? You know, if usually your the language is English, you can put that there so English speakers can find your language. Um, if you have other languages, you know you can you can put your videos that are you can put that your videos are in this language so that language speakers of that language can more easily find your your uh, your video. You can help other people. You can have help from other people that they can help you translate your video or add a description or subtitles. This is off by default because obviously being you know pessimistic about it, if you allow anyone to translate your video, I don't know that language, and I let someone else translate it. Is it correct? Are they writing crazy things in my transcription? I don't know. So it's off by default, but if you will be able to approve it before it's applied. But again, if I don't know that language and I'm letting other people translate it, can I trust it? Yes. Does YouTube create subtitles or the create them? It creates subtitles um, with its own artificial intelligence as best as it can, and sometimes it works very well, sometimes not so well. If I've got perhaps a bit of an accent or a um, um, what's another word for accent? Um, you know, southern accent and all of that. If I've got an a, a dialect, a, a, an accent or a dialect, it might not fully get what I'm trying to say and it. I have seen various uh, versions where I'm saying something and it got the word confused, especially if I say a person's name. The artificial intelligence is not smart enough, but it's very close, very good. So captions here, this is kind of weird. Um, caption certification. Uh, you have to 
kind of say here the captions that are appearing in your videos and there are automatic captions you have to say which of these does it apply most of them for all of us none of these apply except this content has never aired on television in the US well this is a video that I created specifically for YouTube it has not existed anywhere else so probably your default is going to be that one when you upload a video in the beginning YouTube will suggest to you try to fix it this way in the future there's a problem this way it's too shaky the volume is is weird it will try to give you suggestions and a possible way to fix it uh, there is a sort of like a a, a shakiness remover that it, you can activate which is not that great but you have that ability and there's a increase volume effect which might help you I think for myself I I don't think this is helpful at all I I would use a video editor like when we talked about Windows Movie Maker and such I would use those features there to um, improve my video. I don't like these built-in improvements myself. But leave them on for the moment and see how they might work for you and then you can decide. If I've got a business in San Diego and I'm doing videos about my business and I want people to come to my business in San Diego, it might be useful to attach a location to my video. But if I'm selling products all over the world, it might not be very useful to put a location because it, it doesn't matter and I think you can only do one at a time one location yeah it's one at a time so if people are searching the keywords of San Diego or if they're in San Diego and they're searching for something like that uh, I could be found if I mark it as a location but um, See the zip code work. Okay, so it'll kind of give you uh, an area of zip code as well. And then your other statistics, number of views, and all of that. Do you want this to be visible for people? Do you want to give your statistics away about how many views you've had, how many thumbs up, and other things like that? Yes or no? I don't think there's any detriment to leaving it on, except if your videos are not popular at all and you're not getting any views, um, you know, people would see this is not a popular video. When you make any changes here, click Save. Let's look at Branding. You can add a watermark to your videos. This requires that you have a little square graphic, that you have a graphic that has transparency. The best one has transparency. You can upload it without transparency and it'll be all right. But let's look at an example. If I go look at maybe this random one over here. OK, so there's an ad playing. So if I were to click on that ad, uh, Saturday Night Live company would get some profits from that. I'm going to skip the ad. The video plays. You see this logo on the corner. That's the watermark. They they embedded their logo onto the um, onto the video. So even if my video shows up in another uh, website, if someone shares it to another website, the logo is going to be there. Uh, even on their site so that's there a little square graphic it'll put a logo on the bottom right corner uh, to show whose video it is yes no I think they they'll, they're only allowed in the bottom right corner <clears throat> so I'm gonna look at another one um, yep see there it is on the bottom right so it can only um, it can only be on the bottom right. No, but I'm asking, like, if somebody wants to look at 
No. No, it's embedded into the video. It's not like a photo in that you have a photo editor and you can kind of Photoshop it. Video editing stuff in video is much more complex even if you've got video editing software because you have something on top of a background it's very hard to remove that element it's embedded into the video and therefore you can't remove it let's see uh, advanced you don't really need to worry about that one you can look at it on your own yeah don't worry about advanced Analytics, we'll look at that very briefly because there's nothing to look at here. I have no videos, I have no views, I have no traffic, therefore there's nothing to look at here. But if I had a fully set up account, I would see here. Here's an overview of your traffic in real time. It'll tell me exactly who's watching it. Every 10 seconds it'll update and tell me lots of detail. It can tell me here um, what's the amount of time people have watched audience retention, people's, people's attention span dropped off 10 seconds into your video, or 10 minutes. Who are the people watching your videos? From where are they watching in the world? From where did they come to your site? From, you, from Twitter, from another YouTube channel, etc. What devices do they use? Which of the translations that you have was most popular, if you have multiple translations? Uh, overview on your subscribers and when they came and if they left um, likes and dislikes on your videos who's sharing it and comments and everything so lots of detail all for free and it tells you this and it starts to build up this info when you've got videos and you start to get traffic yeah you get benefits of that as well if you have monetization and even if they're not subscribe uh, subscribed or signed in you would still profit if someone clicks the ad if you don't have monetization it still has a value because over over here I was uh, when I started the day I originally was in Firefox and and I was not signed in on Firefox but as I watch some videos it still tracks you and so when I come back to okay today I'm going to be to taking YouTube the Japanese and um, it will remember what I did even if I'm not signed in and it'll keep showing um, it'll keep showing you things so what I mean is those um, views and likes uh, help the video maker make money you have to be a subscriber no it, it does help you make money yeah even if you're not signed in Yes. So, how was it that this unabating photo thing became so popular and all of a sudden, I mean, how, can, how, does, how does the market that thing about making? Well, um, okay, so this, at one point um, it got popular and then everyone jumped on the bandwagon, which as a little preview, one of the tactics to, to get views and such on YouTube is to create something that's already proven popular. So I'll expand on that in a moment. But the idea is, at some point, someone uploaded the video and then maybe shared it on Facebook, and that helped it make it more popular, more people saw it, and then other people got the idea. I also want to... Um, make my own version. So somewhere the catalyst happened for virality to going viral. Either in YouTube itself or this being shared on Twitter or I had first gotten to it by reading an article about it. In my articles app I saw the, f the first mention of this about people are going crazy over this new trend the aluminum um, uh, ball. So I, I read the article myself first, and then I watched a video about it, not this one, and then now uh, Action Lab has one, and Outdoor Boys has one, and Veritasium has one, and Guava Juice has one, now everyone's got one. No, that's not the original one. No. 
I don't know which is the original one, but this at the moment is currently popular number 21 on YouTube at the moment. Uh, and what they're doing here is actually they're combining several things. They're, they're combining, you know how they were weighing it and such. They're combining how some channels they like to do science stuff. There's, there's whole channels of this crushing things that are so popular. They crush toys, they crush hamburgers, they crush uh, water bottles. People love those kinds of videos too. Well, this one is combining the scientific kind of video when they were weighing it and putting it in water, dis um, water um, displacement and crushing and all of that. So they're combining it all and it's working, 9 million views. And if I had clicked on their ad at the beginning, they profited from that. And no doubt they are profiting from so many views. So I don't know the original, uh, the original video. I don't, I don't remember it being any of these ones. Uh, but okay, people love kids. What's the kid doing there? No purpose at all. But here's the kid. He's cute. I'm going to keep watching. And there's the ball. And he's going to talk about it himself. Mirror polishing uh, aluminum foil ball attempt number two. Well, he's already uploaded one of them. And maybe he's doing a different version. Two million views on this one. Maybe the first one only got 100,000. Okay, well, uh, here they are playing with aluminum in, on their heads. So just uh, all of these videos about... Um, about um, yeah, see there it is it starts off so he's using his Dremel and everything and it does get like a mirror polish ball the one that I saw originally was that in the original Japanese version is that people had a little mallet that they would be hammering out the kinks right here using power tools and such uh, that's another variation but the original that I saw of it was people wrapping it and rubbing it and polishing it and hammering it and it was like a Zen thing to do and now it's like this version so just as a quick little side note which we'll do deeper in a moment side note yes. how to not copy borrow uh, improve how to um, get views on YouTube borrow the ideas of po that are popular but make your own version with your own voice or style your own spin I haven't seen one yet of uh, uh, cats doing it so maybe I can somehow get my cat into it, and uh, I'll look at I'll get a million views. So, for my business, so let's say so I usually say Victor's Bakery. Okay, Victor's Bakery, fictional business. How can I use the the Japanese foil ball in a video for Victor's Bakery? I'm gonna have cupcakes that have fondant uh, on the cupcake, little food grade silver paint balls on my cupcakes so there it is the Japanese foil ball cupcake challenge so for Victor's Bakery I'm selling my the purpose of my fictional business Victor's Bakery is I'm selling cupcakes and birthday cakes and all of that I got it cake balls or cake pops those cake those little round cake pops on a stick spray paint them with food grade silver paint Japanese foil ball cake pops that's the next viral sensation. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, yes. So that particular video that I would be uploading, um, that's, that's what we'd have the ability to do there. So just as an example here, so I have a Japanese foil ball cupcakes. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Pictures Bakery. And I write in here, in the latest craze of the Japanese foil ball, uh, you're going to have something amazing. Here's our cupcakes made out of uh, pure organic ingredients and so forth. And I'm putting those keywords of what is popular at the moment. Yes. About the uh, subscriber, 
both display in the channel and also in analytics. Uh, so what the difference is and how do we see the subscriber or the audience? Uh, is it in the IP address or in the email? Or now are you saying you, are you saying you see the you see your subscribers or someone else's subscribers? Yeah, we see the subscriber to the channel. To your channel. You see the subscribers to your channel right here under community. Under community, um, you you see right here there is a screen that'll list that'll show you all your subscribers. You also will get an email that will tell you you've got a new subscriber. You will see all your subscribers right there. Community subscribers. I think she's asking whether you're going to see if their eyes yeah, the audience as well. If they don't subscribe. subscribe. Yeah. If they don't subscribe? Right. They don't subscribe. And how do we know where the audience came from? Or is it in the IP address? Or is it just the demographic? Like the region? Or how? How they display that information in the... It's going to be, uh, yeah, tra <laughs> traffic, playback locations. That will show you a region. That will show you a global, that on the map, it'll show you where your traffic, again, I can't, I can't show you here, but it'll show you here, and it'll show you subscribed versus unsubscribed, and it'll show you subscribed. Most of your subscribers come from Canada, and most of yours that are not subscribed are coming from Mexico. Yeah, all the demographics will be listed in all of these screens in a graphic uh, on the on these all of these screens here. So it'll show you views by subscriber versus not subscriber. Yeah, it, it tells you everything. Subscribers versus not. Yeah. Yes. In, do you mean in this screen here? And it will have the, the, the IP address? No, it will have, um, it, it, if they are subscribed to you, uh, they will, it will show their icon and you'll be able to click and view their channel. And so whatever they have on their account, that's as much as you will know. You, you're not going to know on an individual case-by-case -case basis their location or anything like that for privacy reasons but uh, within the analytics here in general you will get the data about locations and all of that but not on individual people you can however have the ability that when you've got subscribers you can chat with them individually and then you can message them individually and maybe then find out their location and you know do some marketing to them and say hey thanks for subscribing use this coupon code next time you want to buy something from our site so once you've captured them as a subscriber then you can market to them sort of like email an email blast or an email subscription yes so the only per, per subscriber data that's captured is the channel yes the channel name, but then you'll be able to click and view the view their channel. So uh, let me show an example over here. Um, let's see if I can find his example site. Um, okay. So um, this uh, this YouTuber, this YouTube channel. If he had subscribed to my account, I would see his name, his channel name. I would click on it, and I would go see his channel. So depending what he has revealed here, then I can get more info, usually under About. So under About, this is what they've written. Um, I can then communicate with them directly in whatever links they had here if they put an email address for business inquiry, for business inquiries click here to reveal their, their email location United States that's as much as they wrote there but yes you you see you have a link to their channel uh, and whatever they've shown you is what then you can see yeah
Yeah, I have to double check exactly how much, but it is up to them uh, how much or how little. Translations, uh, I don't have much to say there. You can check that out on your own. If you do need to do your videos in multiple languages, you can go there. Uh, and then uh, create, looking in here. So this is the screen where I'm saying that you, you can uh, get uh, music. This is actually very cool because when you go to create, you have all of these songs, thousands. You can keep scrolling and scrolling. Well, even better, you have show me music in a genre. I want to hear music in the style of pop, jazz, country, reggae. So let's just say I want to hear some alternative music. So I get all of these. I can then press play to preview it. What down thy boat? There you go. So if I want that style, I have plenty of all of these. Two minutes long, etc. Okay, I can also uh, filter in terms of mood, music that is bright, calm. Let's go the opposite way now. Let's go to calm. Let's say this one. So this one is calm and also hip-hop. This one is calm and country. So they can be combined. Then I can go to um, instrument. Uh, give me some organ music. This, what's that? Yeah, I really like them a lot. They're in very, they're professionally produced music. They have partnerships with all of these. These are the creators of this music. YouTube basically hires them and they create all of this great, you know, generic, but not in a bad way, generic music in these different styles. I use this all the time. In all of my clients and in my personal stuff, I use this all the time because obviously I'm not going to use copyrighted music and I can find uh, something in a certain genre, mood, and instrument that will usually work for everything. And, and it's um, basically it's downloadable, so even if you had other uses for it, mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yes. You take all that stuff into Premiere Pro and just have a separate track for each instrument. Yeah. And it on its own. Um, Is that the way you do it? You take those into Premiere as separate tracks? Yes, uh, although um, depending on the video, you probably wouldn't have separate songs. But um, you can you you can download a song. You can't separate each song into tracks. However, you cannot take out the drum solo out of this. Oh yeah, yeah. You can download and as many of these songs and add them into Premiere or Movie Maker or whatever to add to your video. Yeah, that's what they're here for. Yeah. Yes. They get the royalties, yeah. Mm -hmm. One more question back here. Oh. Nope, these songs are here for that purpose. Now you're asking in terms of using the songs to a video you're going to upload to YouTube or just. Yeah, if I want to put music behind my video, I can't. Yeah, that's the use point. The song that I just happen to have on my computer. Yeah, that's the point of this whole screen. Okay. That's the point of this screen. You, all of this music is here for you to use on these videos. This is not here for me to play. And I'm not going to play this while I'm doing my my laundry. I'm going to download all of these to use them into my videos. That's the purpose of this whole section. Now. The clause, the clause is very open-ended for anything, even for personal or commercial purposes. But what I was about to say, there's one little catch right here. Attribution. The default is all licenses. Uh, and some of them say attribution not required, and some of them say attribution required. 
Now, if I'm looking under attribution required, you can use any of these songs. But notice, all of these have a little, a little man icon. And when you, when you look there, it says Echoes of Time version 2. You're free to use this song in any of your videos, but you must include the following video description. So if you use any of these songs that say attribution required, if they have the little person right there, you have to copy and paste this whole part into your video. So if you use it on YouTube, you need it there. If you use it on your website, you need it on your website. Wherever you use it, you need this attribution. I don't like that. I, don't, I never remember to do that. I don't want that extra step. So I would recommend whatever you search here, always have it on attribution not required. I don't know how many are in, they don't give you a number. I don't know how many I'm excluding by putting it here. I don't know if it's a thousand or a hundred. I don't know. I don't care. I'm only going to look at the attribution not required because I don't want that extra step that I know I'm going to forget to put that attribution everywhere. And then when I don't put it, then I'm violating the, the agreement and then I'm in trouble. Guilty until proven innocent. If you remember to put it, yeah. yeah. So uh, I see people do this all the time. Some of the YouTube channels that I, uh, that I, that I like watching, they often use the re attribution required. And I see it there at the bottom of the description, unobtrusively out of the way. As long as it's there, you're fine. But for me, I know I have that trouble remembering that. I've got too much to do, one more thing to remember. So in my case, I just put attribution not required. And now all of these thousands of songs are all here perfectly fine, available for you to use without that extra attribution for all purposes, personal or commercial. You can also then search by duration, the length of the, the, length of the song. Uh, I know personally what I like to do when I make videos. I really like to s try to synchronize the visuals with the audio. So if I've got um, you know, a song that's three and a half minutes long, uh, I make a video that fits in it so that the song plays one time. If my video is 10 minutes long and I download a two minute long song, well, I'm going to have to loop the song a few times or put different songs in it. And what I like to do is whenever, you know, there's, there's these beats in the music, like when there's, a, when there's a beat on the drum or the guitar twang, I like to synchronize that with the visuals, although that's a lot of effort in, you know, movie maker. But maybe I need a really short song, a really, a really short sound item. So here's, the, they call them a sting, a musical stinger. So this 14 seconds long. It's too exaggerated, but uh, you could play a little bit of that between, maybe you're making a 20 minute long video and you've got talking, people talking at something, about something, then you have this thing right here and then something else, a little bit of a transitional song or sound. Maybe a shorter one like this. No, that one's too short. But over here. And we're back. So that sort of thing. These little musical stings. Lastly, from here we have sound effects. Maybe you need a sound effect instead of actual music. So how about a 18 volt cordless power drill high switch, high pitched. Okay, categories. Let's hear categories about crowds. Battle, agony, moans. We don't need to hear that one. Battle cry, high pitched. Battle crowd celebration. <laughs> crowd talking. <laughs> Some of these are so corny. <laughs> Zombie? 
There's a lot of fun ones here. You can also search, yep, so zombie. Aggressive zombie snarls. <laughs> There you go. So you have you have music and you have the sound effects. So obviously these these ones could be these sound effects could be a little bit of extra added to uh, your your various um, uh, videos. Yeah. Do the sound effects have attribution requirements? No, these are all completely because they're so short. Uh, they're they put them pretty much as public domain, so you don't need to attribute any of these. All right, so um, there's a lot of these settings. Even before we've uploaded a video, we're going to take our second break. We're going to upload a video. Then we're going to talk about tactics to get viewers and followers. I mean subscribers and, and all of that. So uh, it's 11.50. We'll take a break until 12, and then we'll go on.